Yeah, so we did the stairs. So quite a few things on a plate today. So deconstruction, stairs. Uh, we actually got to, Jeff is not here, but we got to get a pick up an order of materials for the greenhouse parts tomorrow, stuff like that. There's labeling for the deconstruction of the house. Um, so we kind of want to see how we want to divide up tasks. But I guess it's kind of a busy day. In fact, there's two people arriving today. There's Neil Ladani and this other guy, Richard Lane, who apparently just signed up. Um, so he said he's he made a wire transfer and he's coming tomorrow. I was in contact with him before, but he never responded again. But let's see if he shows up, but apparently so. Um, in which case, so there's like 4.30 and 5.30 arrivals at the airport. So I don't know, maybe combine that with the materials run later. Um, but we don't really have the people here. I don't know when they're gonna uh, appear back from they're organizing their the trip, like right now. So whatever the transit time from San Luis to here is. Mhm. Mm so probably they might be here like two or something, yeah. one or two. Mhm. Mm yeah. So other than that, yeah. So a lot of a lot of stuff on the plate. Uh, what else? Other logistics issues. Uh, shuffling some people around. Logan, what, are you leaving tomorrow morning or? Leaving today. I gotta leave mid afternoon. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. So you won't even make the the final uh, tear down. I'll probably help start it. But yeah. I'll have to leave probably yeah. later by then three o'clock. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we gotta be careful about it. Actually, I don't know how the how the guys are gonna be in shape today after. I don't know. So I think we should kind of get to that first thing after lunch or. Yeah, one, twelve thirty or one, I would say actually, okay. so that we don't extend it into uh, too much pain. What do we have on the docket this morning? Well, on the docket we were stairs and house stuff, but okay. um, so depending what people are are up to, but marking also. So on the house, I probably want to go out there. In terms of the old house, the the new CD Home Three, we want to get a nice inventory and marking of all the parts. So when we do it again, it's uh, in a particular order, and we in fact could just follow the same procedure, even reuse the holes that are already in the materials, so that yeah. we're not uh, uh, and everything actually fits because everything is pretty much more or less fits <laughs> right now. We can actually make some improvements as we build the next one. Um, Possibly one investment would be um, whatever whatever pad we start from, make sure we invest in leveling the sill plate really well. So possibly even doing like a little step, little poured footer that we completely level like really perfectly on that pad. Unless we actually do a dedicated pad that we have just for just for that and we make sure it's really high quality and yeah. all that. There was so, mention of, what is it called, auto leveling? There's that. Component? Yeah, like that you can do. Worthwhile and use so it. that's um, that requires a lot of mixing. It comes in five gallon buckets, okay. but it, it is a bunch of mixing. It's it's kind of like pouring another job of concrete. Sure. Um, it's it's just a thin layer. So right now we can uh, form up, probably form up a tiny, you know, just t tiny leveling of the whole thing. Yeah. Now, how do you make it bond to to the former? You'd have to drill in and like put little rebars like tiny rebar sticking out so it actually adheres because it's not going to be a good connection to the existing concrete if we just pour we have to kind of make, sh make sure you have some other mechanical reinforcement there mm -hmm. um, yeah and talking about low cost foundations definitely the concrete is a lot of work but um, how to make it easier like we do know things like like railroad tracks what do they do they get, get a bunch of stones and then railroad ties they do have, uh, like some people do do wood foundations where it's on packed gravel or some rubble trench, but, but that kind of style where you just bring in rock and not the concrete, that's another way to go. And depending on the context, I think it should be explored more because it definitely works. Um, I, I think there's more to be explored there for lower cost, reducing the cost of it and carbon yeah. footprint of foundations. So that would be something interesting. Uh, to take a look at in the future, then there's the idea of uh, like st like stem wall foundation, which 
the pain there is you're doing basically double the form work. If you do a little stem, you have to have boundary on each side. But if we can possibly 3D print that kind of stuff, then um, we could get good good leeway and pretty accurate foundations that are easier to do. Um, this goes back to the large scale 3D printer. How far we're going to get on it, um, and can we succeed at it? I mean, I, I think that's wow. That's it's got huge potential, and I guess it's the the idea there is once again the one percent inspiration, ninety nine percent perspiration. It's like it's going to work. It's like who's going to do it, or what, how how are we going to take the energy, spend the energy to make it actually work, work really well. So. But on the house here, so we're looking at pretty much we're buttoning in everything up for water tightness. So we've got the battens on the side now there, up 12 feet. On the roof, I, I put in there was one latch that we used to get in off the roof before we actually had the carport. So we actually climbed out the roof and down a big ladder. Um, no, how do we do it? Well, uh, yeah, down a big ladder, right? We we went all the way down from the roof when we built the roof first. Um, we had to put up all the all the materials up there but we left a latch so we can climb oh yeah so we can climb down the latch as opposed to like uh, so we can walk off the second floor as opposed to walking off the roof onto a ladder because that's like really high so I closed up that latch put an insulation on it um, put up house wrap on the top the, the remaining steps on top are to to do the siding because there's about almost two feet missing on top so doing that I was doing that. I'm not sure if I can finish work on that today because we probably got to do the labeling on the other house, get ready for that other stuff. But the stairs went excellent. So that's that's what I did up there. There was that latch that that was there. That I put a piece of OSB on, put a boundary. There's this four inch little step all around that holds the insulation. There's two layers of insulation that are each two inch thick. So here attaching that, uh, putting in the insulation. Uh, doing the, the house wrap tape to to close up the seams mm. for air tightness and then put the EPDM back on and here I'm working on taking off the boards that that are pinching down that are pinching down the EPDM on the sides uh, to clear that to put on house wrap and then to pin it, to put to then put on the siding so the siding is not on yet um, but yeah did that and then what else uh, here we've got more footage of the the cutting. Um, yeah, this this was pretty cool. Um, yeah, good job there. We got the footage on that. Uh, improvements for next time. Uh, definitely a jig. Uh, something like even a 3D printed jig that allows you to fit in the next step at the exact location. Uh, I think that could probably help. A way to hold up the yeah or even just to put in the, the wood blocking yeah uh, because then you can lay the steps on easily yep yeah I think just having so, the measurements so that you can put that blocking in ahead of time would make that go really, really smoothly if you just need like you start from the top and work down yeah or um, mm. yeah and if we look from the back, uh, so there's a nice pattern of blocking on the back. Uh, so the jig would would put in the the two by four wood support. Was there a lot of issue with the bowing, or that, that kind of went away with the better wood uh, bowing of the Paul the and treads? I, we had to um, kind of. He would start the screws. And then we would come in to the nice smooth flat pad inside the house and we would both kneel on it as he re-screwed okay. the screws and they added more screws and that helped quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't know the best way to do that, <clears throat> but maybe to have some clamps, three yeah, clamps, clamps, three seat clamps, just clamp it down before you do any screwing, like mm -hmm. keep it all really, really flat. Clamping could help it. Um, if the boards are still laying on a pile, say we pre get a chance to pre-cut this if they're warped up, just stacking them vertically upon each other that flattens them out, yeah. especially in a humid environment, if you were to do that. Um, I mean, that's how they make violins and things like curved wood. It's just uh, add some water to it. Yeah. And, 
yeah. Um, another video. Oh yeah, so. Uh, oh yeah, I pulled off Ken's one of Ken's videos um, when we were doing the house wrap. Recording. So. There, and then there was. Um, did you guys see the nice pictures? The glory pictures. Yeah. Um, that was pretty good. So. Look at these faces. Anthus is handing in front of my face. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was pretty good. Um, nice, nice pictures. And we'll time lapse the the deconstruction today. Now, the deconstruction part. Let's see. This is. Oh yeah, that was that was this one. Um, we can play that in the back. But, you know, what is the, the purpose of the deconstruction? There's actually a good piece of information that does come out of it, and that is the ultimate limit of speed, like what the limit is if, like imagine you play that video in reverse, mm -hmm. that means that every single person knew exactly what to do, because uh, here, the information is already contained in a building, and it's like all, act, all screws put in place. So if a person knows that, the deconstruction actually tells you the limit of how long it would take if everything had perfect flow. So that is like the ultimate baseline for ergonomics of build. And then the question would be, well, how close to that can we actually get in a real build when we're actually going up and things are not measured yet? So devices we could use there is pre-measuring things and pre-marking jigs. So we can take a look at every step and say, oh, okay, uh, how can we make that easier, more accurate, poke a yoke, meaning things go in a certain way, they're pre-marked. Yeah, so that's that would actually be an encouraging point to look at. And, and then we can say, we got to within like 2x of the ultimate time. Because I suspect the ultimate time is going to be quite it's going to be quite fast in the order of hours, like uh, three to ten hours. Uh, so then, what's your total build time? And it, of course, depends how many people there are and how they're getting in the way. But the thing that we can do right now is take when we do the deconstruction, take up all the like. For example, when we're putting up the trusses, maybe people get in the way of each other. But here, right now, taking it down, it's a little easier because gravity's helping you. But that's where we could have like, for example, four teams, eight ladders, you know, take one truss after another, one joist after another really quickly because it's not about locating them and knowing what to do. That block's going to go away. It's just put it in a pile. Uh, I think the easiest way probably to take the, uh, take the panels off is, yeah, after we take them off, slide them off and like for the light ones, we can definitely hang them off the edge and two people would receive them on the, on the ground floor. Yeah. For the windows, uh, we'll see about that, uh, how comfortable we feel that we can actually push it off the edge and can we actually hold it, Put maybe put a, put a rope on it, uh, I don't know if we want to <clears throat> do that. We can basically see is there a good way to hold it. If you can hold it effectively, then, then it's much easier, just some kind of a, a rope attachment to it maybe. Um, what would be the easiest thing for that? That would probably be a, a screw and hook. We, we actually got some of those. Maybe like uh, we can put in a hook at the top so we can do a safety rope and so that we take it down. But it may not even be necessary. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll we'll see how it yeah. how it looks in practice. Because I mean, getting the things down is much easier after all. So um, I think another good data point for deconstruction is eventually <clears throat> people may want to expand these homes. These are designed for expansions. So just knowing like what is the prep time to remove a wall mm -hmm. or something like that might be good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So basically modification time. So you can plan on like how long is the house going to be exposed yeah. to the elements. Yeah. And we kind of want to make sure we do that today because if we don't do it today, it will stay out there to get rained upon. So we had good weather, so that was pretty good. Um, and here I was taking out those boards from the top. Um, yeah, so that top part, uh, so I stapled the, some of the 
house wrap on. Oh yes, look at that little staple stapling thing. Yeah, so I took that remaining house wrap, put it on the back side there, uh, stapled these up. There's little chunks missing there. Not sure how big a deal that is, but yeah, ideally we want to have that. And once again, it's shingles, shingle overlap. Top, top house wrap goes over. Yeah, so that's that's basically it. So given that, um, so what do we want to do today? Um, so I definitely want to do marking on a old house. Do you know the best place in your house to potentially save money? Um, how do people feel today? Uh, Want to keep still working on the stairs or um, let's see. landing or? Paul and I have the stairs. We would need to make that landing box. That's where we're at now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that. We need to do more paneling inside. Uh, we could probably s just start with marking and see how that goes. I don't think that should take too long, right? So long as we, I mean, all the all the wall modules are marked. So I think it'd be mainly marking plywood and joists, right? Mm-hmm. And figuring out how to mark things like the top plates, the ring joists. Yeah. Um. Not sure we need more than than a person. Like I could do that, so I can keep notes in my notebook as well. Yeah. For what parts? So I maybe I'll just do that. Okay. Um, and do we want to mark things like the uh, the joists? Position? Yeah. Positioning. I'd say so because, um, yeah. So so we we know um, maybe if there's a <clears throat> slight difference. I mean, maybe, maybe some fit better than other. We know these fit. Yeah, yeah, just number it. So, I mean, just for inventory sake, like that you know, oh, we actually have all the 16 we need or whatever. So that um, in the next workshop, you can say, oh, okay, we need exactly this. And those kinds of details actually end up mattering because a lot of time we spend just inventorying stuff and looking for stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Um, right, so on a house, so on a on a landing, so how high are we off? We've got, uh, let's see, so in the video, we were, let's see, what's the best video there to look at um, where we ended up. Yeah, so, uh, let's see. Is that as far as we are, or we got another one underneath that? We got another one under that. Um, Basically, we've put, we, yeah, the, the last step where we're at ends, it's like 16 and a half inches above the ground. So, the next one down, half. would that be our landing? Yeah, so if you divide 16 and a half, so it's about 8, so yeah. then the landing would have to be a little bigger than than a 7 and 3 quarters, so yeah. like 8. I think that's that's fine, um, the way it works out. But that means that we would have to cut down probably, a, so it's like 7.25 for a 2 by 8, we'd probably cut down a 2 by 10 for the exact height. It's somewhat inconvenient, but maybe, well, what if we don't cut? Well, no, you want to you wanna have the first step regular. You don't want to make that. Uh, yeah, the first step has to be regular. So if we, if we've got 16 and we got uh, 16 and a half, so minus 7.5 or 7 point seven and three quarter yeah. or so. So yeah, eight and a quarter. Um, right. So eight and a quarter. Well, that would be a, a two by eight if we have an exact. If we have one inch. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I, oh, that would actually be pretty convenient there. Uh, so maybe get a get an exact measurement. If you could use a two by eight, which is seven point two five, then you can get to like if you use what we were going to use was one bys, which are three quarters of an inch. So you're missing a quarter. But if that's the case, 
maybe put a little quarter spacer on the bottom that would be easier uh, quarter spacer like on the rim of the framing yeah we should probably build up rather than cut because building up you're working with the regular lumber uh, so yeah I think probably better than the cutting yeah save some work uh, we just need to locate some quarter inch material which we have in the lumber pile in the back so that would be okay um, so landing would be a, a good task uh, the considerations for landing are that the wires feed from the utility channel behind there so if we do want to do the landing we do have to put in the, the panel that's behind there okay. uh, but well actually hmm Wait, what's the detail there? That's uh, so those wires. Oh, what is that detail there? So we've got the landing, and above it is the utility channel. We have the utility channel running all around, so we still. Yeah. Um, we still want to keep that openable so that when we feed the wires through. Because uh, what what we have to do here is either run the wires in a little channel under the carport door or go around it and we were thinking of going around it and put it in a trim put the all the wiring in a trim there's like not too many wires that are going there but uh, there are so probably um, if we leave the bottom of that utility channel open uh, well, we don't necessarily have to put the panel on right now because the bottom is getting left open. So we feed the wires through and under. Uh, we have to, I guess, depending how we build how we build the landing. But if you make it into like a standard frame structure with a frame outside, then wires cannot get through it mm -hmm. we were going to run the wires right behind it so we have to have some aperture left open maybe leave like uh, when we do the framing maybe le leave us you know, drill a hole so that we feed the wires through or something like that or okay. actually like a hole slit yeah. so that the plat it would be ideal if the platform itself is removable yeah so so, so that the wires can run under so effectively like if we run the wires like think about it if the wires are running through right now can we just put the put our platform on top of that allowing the wires to run to the wall which is the the, the side wall okay which does have some electrical it's got outlets uh so we yeah those wires go uh, under okay. mostly to this wall not not to mm -hmm. here because there's really no electrical mm -hmm. here there is electrical in here Okay, so it needs to like so, go in front of. Well, so if if we go around the door, which we have to make that decision, it's probably that's yeah. what we do because you don't want to be a, putting this trip thing in front of the door. So we're gonna go around the door, let's say, in a in a trimmed up structure. Henry was probably saying something. Yeah. Uh, and then run from here. We're running straight oh, to here. Henry doesn't have audio. Is there audio? Uh, we got it here. Oh, okay. Maybe not. <clears throat> okay, how about now? Is that... Do we have audio now? Okay. Now you should have audio. Alright. So, Katarina, how are we running that electrical there? Probably in a channel, in a trim channel around the door, right? Yeah, the context is how do you run the electrical around the carport door, which goes under the landing and into the supporting wall of the of the stairs. Yeah, this I'd say it. channel is an immediate solution, and then when we make the platform, I would just leave the wood like a slot so that you can literally put this on top not a hole where you're feeding through and then you can't take it off a slot so, uh, so let's do let's actually do a dock yeah pull up design so, uh, dock 
upstairs. Yeah. If you go to 120 Design Lessons Day 18, mm -hmm. maybe we can just keep adding to that. Because yep. the other stair details there. <clears throat> yep. So if we go to CD Home 2 stairs, that's the length. Yeah. So if we do the landing like it's shown here, uh, what we have to do on a landing is on, let's see, let's do the CAD. Let's look at the CAD. So there's our So if we hide this wall here, so we see the platform is like this, but here I would say we just take out so the platform is just a simple thing. It it want yeah, that's you want to have a supporting in the middle, supporting part one or two in the middle. The spacing there should be like sixteen inches okay. for the one bice. Um, Katrina, can you speak in as well? So here what I would suggest is this part here, this piece of wood, we have a s slit there, so we can actually draw that in. I would cut out. Uh, you're, you're thinking how to run uh, wires through the garage door? Is that the question? Around the carport door and under under the landing so if we do it under the landing we could leave like a little um, put like a hole in here but a hole basically a slot okay, that well I on me. But yeah a slot there. that's the only way you have to go through the door through the wall into the door over the header um, yeah, over the door. And we're planning on like a, probably like a three and a half inch utility, like trimmed with one by fours around the door. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to build it up a little bit. Uh, that's where 3D prints would be very useful. Basically a raceway around the door yeah. that looks like trim. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here, the detail on this thing is we're cutting it out all the way to the bottom and to the top, so just... Oh, now we've got... Uh, take this one down. Oh, this mouse hole there. Um, that's, that's something like what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you want to do that or? Hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe you could go because there's you, know, you go up to slide nine with the first four power outlets. You, it looks like you need electric on both walls inside the closet because there's an electrical hmm. expansion to addition inside closet utility channel. Oh. Okay. There. So if you do that, then maybe you could just keep it following that exterior wall. 
and then maybe on the closet side of the landing you can make a utility channel that comes around oh, okay, okay, there. the back of it. That part. Mm -hmm. This is what you're talking about? Yep. Where, so where would you want to go? Keep that, uh, keep that um, line of electric following the blue wall and kind of reaching that arrow and then after oh, yeah. you get to the green oh, yeah, wall, there just you go. follow the inside uh, part of the landing to get that to the saves us. Demo. Does that work? Yeah. Your utility channel will be the not small. regular on the inside, but it's not running that much. Yeah. No, I, I actually like that. So, because we have the utility channel at a particular height everywhere, it's going to be the landing is going to be expose us like a little bit of that utility channel yeah. so we can build it up there have this little utility channel thing or in fact do a custom one where it's right on top of it or something um, so that way the wires are completely exposed uh, ex well exposed as an accessible not exposed but accessible yeah. what do you think of that Katrina? A little problem solving on that so we Let's, okay, so let's do slide, duplicate slides, so re reworking. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay, I think that's a good idea. And it's actually, it turns out to be much more mainstream than, than I thought it was. Remember that uh, engineer uh, that we talked to from California that they say that oh, they, they do that? Here, let me send the link. Mm -hmm. um, wire base board. So we do, we'd run this more like here, around the back there. Yeah. In a utility channel that's like right above the landing and therefore that landing, we don't have to complicate the wiring and the landing. The, the wiring's going to be on top and a little channel on top. We could do that. It'll be a little non-standard compared to the rest of the house. Because how deep? Yeah, it looks like it goes same width as the treads. I'm sorry. Uh, how wide? Or how long? How long? To the wall, so it would be 48. Well, uh, in this, so you're talking about here? Yeah. How? Well, it goes all the way to the wall in this design right here. So that means it's four feet plus. Yeah, it's all the way. Through. Okay, so I just pasted some, some uh, a link with some some possibilities. Uh, there's actually a, a type of baseboard that has a, a space for cables, for wires, and then there's like kind of like something that's like a hollow quarter round that you put along your baseboard that can also carry mm. wires. Mm. So something right. like that. Oh. So that's stuff for 3D printing. Uh, so this stuff is expensive. It's like eight footer for it's like ten bucks a foot. Um, yeah. So we just put it on top of the top of the landing. Well, we'd have to right. Um, right. I think so. I think that's a good okay. idea. If we, I mean, yeah. if you can, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm not seeing the exact plan, like where the wires go, t exactly. Hmm. But if on top accessible, be better than not accessible, just in general. So if we're going to the landing, which is, let's do that here. If the landing is there, where do we actually go? Because then the stairs start. So if you go right, this to this picture, so the landing ends. Okay, so the first. Well, what what I would do then is I would go through that riser that you're highlighting right here into the closet. Uh huh. That would be an easy solution right there. It's accessible. Oh, but look at how how tall the utility channel is. We already have plenty of space to use the existing utility, utility channel design. Yeah. Because this thing already goes. So you can do that. Yeah, we yep. can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just yeah. 
The only thing is like how that utility channel is going to interface with that step. Well, if it's just a little thing like on the floor, it might be more discreet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there the, is you, know, a, you know what I'm saying? There's details. There. Yeah, like that might be weird. Right. Uh, depending on where this tread ends up. But right. that's like little exactly. painful details to finish like around these corners. Um, yeah. If we had the one that's like... So we make this all flat, but we still need a bar here because the, the plywood is going to be starting at this, mm -hmm. starting yeah. there, going up. So we still would need a second uh, strip of I know, but, but, but that, but right, but that, but that can be flat. Yeah. You know what I'm okay, saying? And you can even trim it, you can, you can even trim it up with uh, edging tape so that edging tape is like only like it's thin. So it doesn't, it doesn't stick out of the wall at all. Okay, so let's like leave that flat. We'll plan on the a new part in the bill of materials. Then you get one of those channels. Or, 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 I mean, or we can think if we can make it out of something. Like I'm, you know, I'm still in the process of drinking coffee, so <laughs> I don't know that I can. I have an idea, but yeah. Uh, but between and I also don't know. I don't know how how many wires you need to run through there because that thing was only going to take like one or two. And that's why we have our wider utility channel that we use. But yeah, I think the important details are going to be where does the last step end up and can we see that from the video right here from the one right. not this one but the other one I think we had it yeah let's see how far we went here can't really see it there oh okay there's one more beyond this, Logan? Or is that, no, that's the last one, isn't it? No, or there's one more beyond that, because I was laying on my back to get underneath. Oh, okay, now. Yeah, there. Now. Right, there, there. Okay. okay, so what's that, what is that level there? Well, so the board, I can't really tell. So the board is separate from the floor up to make it level. The boards were like the same, so on the right side, the wall side, we had a 17 inch um, length two by four as a temporary support under the right side on the under the left side it was 16 and a half inches but it was a little loose we just slid them in as temporary supports mm -hmm. so that i could crawl under from the back side and drill in the two by fours so that's mm -hmm. how high the bottom of that the bottom board is so uh-huh about 17 from to the bottom of the double tread? Yeah. Let's see the cat. So if we've got... <clears throat> so let's see what it is here. Here from the bottom. So you're saying this distance and yours. Here it's 11. In reality it's 17. Is that so? Yeah. I'd like it all. And in this, in our case here, our landing is uh, six, about six inch. Um, that's kind of like that's going to be a high landing. Yeah. Well. What's the minimum landing distance, Katarina? Is there one? Because we have... Uh, here it was supposed to end on a... at the wall at four feet. How much? Three feet. If it's three feet, then we have room for another step. Because it seems like... Can't hear you. Can't really hear um, well, if that is correct, that module is already six inches short. It's not 48. And since the step is 11, 
he wouldn't get three feet. Um, you're telling me that that last step is what? That's 39 right now, yeah. Well, no, we no, no. What is the height? Apparently, the height that here is 11, in reality, is 17. It's 17. Is that so? Yeah. It's 17 to that to that two by six there. To the floor. To the floor. Yeah. Right. I understand. But from the floor to to what? To the bottom of the tread. To the two by six. To the bottom of the tread. Can you point it on your screen? What what you? There. Well, that's not the bottom of the tread. That's like one inch and a half below. I'm trying the to understand, bottom, like, it's 17 the minus the height of the step or what? Because I measured and it's 17 and then you take seven and three quarters for the step. So then, you know what I'm saying? We take a look at it in real life and see what we have to do there. We might uh, yeah, have a I high think landing. So. If the landing is high, then, uh, I don't know, leave that, but that means this, what, what's the solution to that? We'd have to make the steps, we need another step, because why is this not adding up? Well, the solution, the, so the solution, yeah. I mean, in real life, we, we might have to make the hole further back. Well, right. I mean, we we could do the the winders a winder step. I guess that would be the solution. A circular, yeah. circular stairway. No, hold on, I'll send. Well, I mean, worst case is we just have this longer here hole that's a little longer. Here. Yeah, make it one bay longer. We can't, we can't because then um, there's no, I mean, access to the bathroom and the expansion door or, oh, I mean, see. we're pretty tight here. We may need to do winder steps. Access, no, you can, st oh, no, I mean, you still have access Click to on that. We want. Um, well, that door is you. Because so there's a door here, but the door. If we made the these, well, the steps would actually stick out. So we leave this bay the same. We leave this whole thing the same here. It's just that these steps stick out more above the door that's going to be here for expansion. That's an expansion door back there. But let's take a look at the link. Anyway, um, yeah, check the link that I just posted if you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's trouble. Okay, that's that's a little more complicated. That's I'm not sure we want to go <clears throat> go there. But what's wrong with if? Well, we'll check the real side. But um, what are options right now? Can we make the treads shorter? What's the what's the requirement on stair design guide? Um, Eleven inch minimum, or maybe ten inch with nosing. Let's see. inch minimum and we have now we have about the same because we got 1.1 inches oh. yeah so we can't shorten the steps to make them can't really shorten the steps we can't heighten the rise 
Unless there is a little leeway on the rise, because like a half inch or a quarter inch would add up over those steps. Uh, like a half inch times 14, that's like seven inches. Yeah. So it's like if you could add a little bit to the height, and we can look at the codes. What the, what do they really say for the allowed rise? Is that really three seven and three quarters, or do do we not know enough? If it's a little, because there was some controversy on whether seven and three quarters is the actual. Okay, that's a question to to architects and engineers. Um, um, Katerina, email Elijah about that. Um, should find out. He probably knows that answer offhand. Um, yeah, but for now, what's the simplest solution? Um, 